What's going on guys? A big trade down the NHL today. First reported by Bob McKenzie. Minnesota trading Jason Zucker to Pittsburgh for Alex Galchenyuk, a 2020 first round pick and Kalen Addison. So Pittsburgh's giving up a lot there in my opinion for Jason Zucker. Apparently last summer they're actually in talks with Minnesota trying to do a Kessel for Zucker trade, but I don't think Kessel would go to Minnesota so the trade couldn't happen. Now looking at this trade, I feel like Pittsburgh's giving up a lot here. Um, personally, I feel like Zucker's a good player, but I don't know, I think Pittsburgh's giving up a little bit too much. So I will find him here. As you can see, trade value is not too high. 27 years old, 84 overall, medium toxic potential there, five and a half million for the next four years. So he has cost control to post to Galchenyuk, who is actually a pending UFA. So Zucker, two way forward, second round pick back in 2010. He's a solid player, but I don't think he's been as good like the past couple seasons. I can see back in 17, 18, his best year, 64 points there in the full 82 game season. That's when he got paid since then, 42 points last year. Um, this year he's just being okay, but um, if he does go to Pittsburgh, plays the Crosby or Malkin, I could definitely see him kind of having a resurgence. Now, Galchenyuk's been, you know, pretty average, I'd say, ever since he left Montreal. As you can see here, in-game, he's 25 years old, A2 overall, medium elite potential, but even with medium elite, he still doesn't have that much trade value. He's only got a couple years left to grow. 4.9 million for one more year. Again, he was really good, I think, in Montreal since then. He's just been okay. If we look at his stats here, you can see he had 40 points last year in Arizona. 50 actually is last year in Montreal, and a couple seasons before that was his best year. 56 points with 30 goals. And unfortunately, he hasn't been as much of a goal scorer, but still, he contributes a decent amount. Like, I'd say he's a 40-point guy. Uh, this year in Pittsburgh, though, he's actually just been pretty average. I thought going to Pittsburgh, um, kind of like what I think will happen with Zucker, he'll get a resurgence, you know, um, become a better player. But he's actually kind of been worse, I would say, even than when he was in Arizona. Now, on top of Galchenyuk, they also add a first-round pick. It's a 2020 first-rounder, unless Pittsburgh misses the playoffs, which pretty much isn't happening, in which case it becomes a 2021 first-rounder. Also, Kellen Addison is actually a very solid defensive prospect in-game, you can see. 19 years old, 66 overall, medium top four potential. Uh, I think he's a former second round pick, 2018. So Pittsburgh here is giving up a really big package for Zucker. Now, I feel like they probably weren't going to re-sign Galchenyuk anyway, so they see him as basically a rental being shipped off with the first rounder and Addison though, which like is a lot to give up. Like personally, I feel like the first and Addison should have been enough and then maybe they could have traded away Galchenyuk to get a pick back or something. Uh, also, you guys didn't know, Galchenyuk of course was a third overall pick in 2012 behind Yakupov and Murray. So. We'll see here if Pittsburgh says yes to this. Looking at the trade value, I mean, it's on medium right now. It could be on low difficulty. No way Pittsburgh says yes to this. And yeah, like, Pittsburgh's even up, I think, way too much. And check this out, guys. This is kind of crazy. I'm offering Zucker to Pittsburgh right now for Galchenyuk one for one. The value's pretty equal. They want Zucker, and still Pittsburgh rejects that trade. Now, in-game, like I mentioned, it has medium elite potential. When I do the rosters, I actually have it set to low elite, which I think is a lot more accurate. But before this video, I put it back to medium elite, as that's what EA has it at. So... Uh, pretty crazy, honestly, that they're even saying no. Got Chenik for Zucker one for one. And so after the trade, guys, just look at what Minnesota's lines might look like. We got Parise, Stall, and Zucker on the first line. Hartman, Galchenyuk, Fiala on the second line. So, of course, Fiala and Galchenyuk they've traded for in the past year. Definitely they're trying to get younger. Galchenyuk's 25, Fiala 23, Donato's 23 as well. They traded for him. Trying to build, you know, with guys like Kunin, Erickson, Eck, uh, even Jordan Greenway. So I wouldn't say it's like a rebuild, but definitely a retool. Now, their defense, they still have a solid top four, I think. Suter, Dumbo, Spurge, and Brodeen. Hunt's actually not too bad. They got Susie Dubnik, not having the greatest year, but you know, he can be a good goalie. So Minnesota is always in that, you know, weird limbo area where they're not good enough to, maybe they make the playoffs, but they're not good enough to really compete for the Stanley Cup. And they're not bad enough to get a top pick. So I feel like they got to get basically lucky in the draft lottery, which they haven't been able to do the last couple of years. So uh, let's take a look here at Galchenyuk wearing the Minnesota Wild jersey. Obviously this is what his third team now in the past one and a half years, which is kind of nuts. And right here, you guys can see Galchenyuk in that Minnesota Wild jersey. Honestly, it doesn't look too bad. And next year, guys, we're going to try to trade from Pittsburgh's perspective. Obviously, I feel like Minnesota's going to accept this. I mean, look at the difference in trade value. Like I mentioned, I feel like Pittsburgh definitely overpaid here. They probably could have gotten away with just Addison and a first-round pick. And if they didn't feel like they're going to re-sign Galchenyuk, they could have then flipped him for, you know, a second-round pick. So losing the first isn't as big a deal. But yeah, this is just such an overpayment. You can see there, Addison and the first-round pick. Minnesota's interested in. Kind of surprising, actually. Zucker's not in the trade block. You got Spurge, Stall, Parise all in the block. There are probably other guys, too. But in real life, you know, Minnesota has been looking to trade Zucker. I feel like they just wanted to get out from that contract, even though they just signed Zuccarello. Uh, Koivu, his will be up at the end of this year. Uh, Spurgeon, of course, got the extension. Stall's got a couple years left. So, again, Minnesota's in a weird area. But um, I would bet, you know, anything, they're going to say yes to this one. And, yeah, trade's accepted. That was... I mean, Pittsburgh's clearly going all in, trying to win that Stanley Cup. Zucker, I think, is a better player than Galchenyuk. In games, 84, Galchenyuk's 82. I would say the difference is probably a bit more than that. Um, 
just based on production. But I feel like the difference between the two players is not a first round pick and Kellen Addison is a solid defensive prospect. I feel like it should have been one or the other if they're also going to give them Galchenyuk, but uh, maybe Minnesota played hardball and, you know, good job on Garen. Got a really nice trade for his team. Now, after the trade, guys, Pittsburgh's honestly going to be stacked when they're healthy. Gensel, Crosby, and Hornquist on the first line. I know Gensel's out for the rest of the regular season. I'm not sure if he'll be back in time for the playoffs or not. Second line there, you could have Rust, Malkin, and Zucker. Third line, McCann, Bukestad, Tanev. Fourth there, Aston Reese, uh, Bluger, Cahoon. Like, a lot of depth there, obviously, led by Crosby and Malkin. Not too bad. Defensively, I think they're pretty solid. Dumoulin, Tang, Schultz, Peterson, Johnson, Marino, especially with, you know, the emergence of Marino definitely helped out that decor. And then even like Jerry, I think, is a very good backup. If not, you know, splitting starts right now with Murray. So if one of them gets hot, you know, just roll with that guy who's hot. One of them gets cold, you throw in the other guy. They definitely have a lot of options there. So uh, if they can't get healthy, I think Pittsburgh would be a dangerous team for sure in the playoffs. Like I mentioned, the condition on that first round pick is that they make the playoffs. If not, they can change it to be a 2021. But I think they'd only do that even if they won the lottery. Like if it's pick 15, they'd probably just leave it 2020, but uh, I still think it's kind of funny. Like teams are just so worried about that. They added that even though they're pretty much a lock to make the playoffs. Right here, guys, they look at Zucker on the Penguins. Uh, I feel like that's Beards a bit much. Honestly, it doesn't really look like him too much. I'm kind of getting like Derek Steffen vibes looking at him right now. It doesn't really look like Jason Zucker, but uh, you can get an idea of what the name and number looks like on the back of that jersey. So that's it, guys, for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. As always, in the comments section, let me know who you think won this trade. I'm pretty sure we're all going to agree that Minnesota definitely won this one but if the penguins go on to win the stanley cup and zucker plays well in the playoffs you know you can't really complain i guess too much as a penguins fan so like i said guys hopefully you enjoyed this one if you did leave a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet please do that thanks as always for watching guys have a nice day goodbye